Hello and welcome to another episode of the Synapse e-learning series. With us today we have Dr. Christopher Barbara in his role as Chairman of the Department of Pathology and in his role as well as Consultant Microbiologist and Virologist. Dr. Barbara, thank you for being with thank us here today. Thank you for the invitation. Um, he will be discussing the role of influenza vaccination and its importance in current medical practice. Um, so on to my first question, doctor. The flu shot can give me the flu. This is one of the many statements which we hear. Do you agree? Oh, certainly not. It won't give you the flu. All the vaccines which we have in Malta are inactivated vaccines. There is no live vaccine in the immunization which we give locally. There used to be in the States and in other countries the intranasal live vaccine and we never give this in Malta so certainly there is no way one can get the influenza or any flu or colds by taking the immunization. When we are um, listening to our patients on many occasions they tell us listen please don't give me the vaccine because last year when I took it I had or suffered from so many common colds. This is absolutely a myth and it is coincidental because the viruses which are present in the immunization are inactivated viruses. They are not live so no way can these produce or give any symptoms of influenza. And that being said, I think many patients are concerned that the influenza vaccine is not safe. It's not safe for them, exactly. it's not safe in general. Exactly. Uh, what do you comment about this? Oh, it, um, it, in the past we used to get um, some problems with the vaccination. Today the vaccine has no mercury, no thiomersal, the adjuvant is very safe. It gives us or boosts our antibody response to the immunization. So today we have a very safe influenza vaccine. It is true that the WHO tries to predict which influenza we're going to get in the next season and unfortunately they don't always get it right. But we remember that we do not get one inactivated virus or type of influenza virus in the vaccine. In the trivalent vaccines which we will give in the public health service there will be a combination of three inactivated viruses. In fact, that leads me to my next question. What, are, what is the pharmaceutical composition of the vaccine? Exactly. So, uh, there are different types of influenza viruses. There is mainly the ones which affect humans, the influenza A and B. Okay. Now, the A is usually commoner and so usually in the trivalent vaccine there are two A's and one B. Okay. The, the more um, modeling um, experiments and exercises are done to try to predict which one is going to affect us, those will go into that particular vaccine. So this particular season will have the influenza A Michigan, the influenza A Hong Kong, and we are also going to get the influenza B um, Brisbane. Brisbane. Yeah. Um, of course, those are the trivalent. This is what we will have for the next um, season, for this particular season. Because we had one particular season where the WHO did not get it right, and sometimes they do not get it right, unfortunately, um, the scientists came up with the idea that instead of putting three viruses, inactivated viruses in the vaccine, they can put four, two A's and two B's. And this year, for those who will try to get the, the tetravalent vaccine, in other words, the four different viruses, there will also be the type B Puke virus as well. This always gives a better chance that if you encounter this virus, okay, then you will be protected because you have your antibodies in your system. Uh, Dr. Barrow, it's good to know the background, the medical background, the pharmaceutical background be behind the influenza vaccination, but one also has to appreciate why the influenza vaccination is so much needed in the community of course. and uh, uh, there's a great distinction between influenza and the common cold what can you comment about the complications of influenza as a disease sure. okay so the common cold we see in all seasons okay um, people can get a bit of sore throat can get mild fever um, a bit of sneezing catar and so on and this happens throughout the seasons usually lasts only a few days the fever is only mild 99 but when you get the influenza this starts abruptly sudden onset acute cough 
the fever is not 99 it's 102 103 all right and the patient is very very unwell i always tell the medical students it's as if the patient has chains tied to his arms and to his legs and no matter how important your appointment is that particular day because of the myositis with all the pains and pains and aches one has you are confined inside at home because you cannot uh, move with all the myositis one important problem is that besides the muscle aches which we get our heart is made up of muscles so we can get a lot of complications from this um, particular um, viral infection and this includes a myocarditis okay it can also include pneumonias and severe pneumonias which do not respond to antibiotics also we can get some types of encephalitis as well so the mortality rate in influenza can be high um, especially in the elderly and in younger children it's very important also you can get from the pneumonias secondary bacterial inf infections streptococcal pneumonias and also haemophilus influenzae that's where the name comes from because it's an opportunistic infection after this particular viral infection so let's not take uh, influenza as if this is a trivial infection not only because this will keep us from work from all our social activities for a period of about three weeks but also because it has complications which could be rather serious and in fact multiple studies have shown a severe reduction in hospitalization rates as well uh, as uh, pneumonia uh, yeah i'm happy you're asking me this question there were studies especially um, people who are institutionalized in homes for example 50 percent less hospitalizations in these people in the home if they take the influenza vaccine more than 50 percent reduction in pneumonias if you take the influenza vaccine so i think these are facts which no health professional should ignore a lot of people, especially health professionals, don't take the influenza vaccine so seriously. But actually, when we do vaccinate our patients, we are going to help them a lot because we are going to avoid all these complications. And of course, this is going to help them a lot. Dr. Babar, if you can elaborate, there's a particular period of the year, a number of months, where we refer to it as the influenza season. Sure. And I understand that in the past there was a time when there was the influenza epidemic, there was an increased uptake of the vaccine here in Malta, exactly. and there was a change in the epidemiological data which you've managed to yes. acquire after the so increased another, uptake. Another another interesting what can you... local point. This is our patients in Malta. Yes, I still recall when we had the scare with the pandemic going back a few years and everyone was investing at home buying antiviral drugs just in case and Malta was the country who had the highest uptake of the influenza vaccine that year if we look at our statistics and this is fact okay we know that that particular season we had 40 less deaths from in the elderly because of course the elderly are the ones who get the pneumonias with the deaths following these conditions so we have good evidence that once you give the influenza vaccine you are going to prevent all these influenza complications and yes um, improve or decrease the mortality in this group of people it further consolidates the fact that prevention is better than cure for sure um, with regards to the influenza season, is there a particular time when it is ideal for us to receive the influenza vaccine? Okay, so the influenza season usually starts around now um, or maybe a bit later, um, end of October, beginning of November and usually keeps going on till May. But there are no hard and fast rules and if you see our statistics from the virology lab, we have already seen in the past months quite a number of patients who have already fallen ill with influenza. Now, we have to remember that once you take the vaccine, once you are given the immunization, it takes approximately two weeks for us to develop antibodies and get protection. So actually, uh, now is the time to start to take the influenza vaccine. If you take it a bit too early, because I remember in the past we did use to start distributing the vaccine at an earlier stage, then because of waning antibody immunity, then you will not have a good titer of antibodies till the month of May. 
So I had decided, listen, it is best to start end of October, beginning of November. Imagine if I were one of your patients and I come to you as my doctor and I'll tell you, listen, but last time when I took the influenza vaccine, I got the cold. And okay. I, can't, I can't actually believe that this time it will be different. What can I reply to try to convince my patient? I, I, I think we are all professionals. We are all scientists. You can never got, get a cold from protein, inactivated protein. There is no live virus in the vaccine which we give. All right? This is different to the intranasal live virus which they give in America. Okay, We do not give any live virus and there is no way you can get an infection from something which is dead. All right, So this is absolutely a myth. Okay? And people who say I got a cold or I got the influenza because I've taken the vaccine is absolutely nonsense. Um, It is true that after you take the vaccine, some people might get a bit of fever, a bit of muscle aches and so on. But this is due to the antibody production, which our body itself is producing. So these are not um, side effects or complications. These are just um, an immune response to the vaccine. You will not get an infection for sure. And I understand this is a public health priority that everyone receives the influenza vaccine, but there are a number of target high risk populations. So there are particular people who are more vulnerable to get the infection and these are the risk groups. Um, Of course, we in Malta have a number of diabetics, metabolic diseases. Um, We already mentioned the elderly before we used to give the vaccine free of charge to people who are over 60 years. Now, um, since the last few years, we have brought down that age group to 55 because we still knew this is a risk factor. People with neurological conditions, of course, these are all entitled to um, the vaccine free of charge. Um, There is no excuse that it is difficult to find the availability of the vaccine because today even the local councils in all areas in Malta or Gozo are offering a free service of immunization at the local council as well. But also if we don't go to the local council, there are all the health centers, okay, even in the hospitals, Mother Day, okay, and also we are so lucky we have private family doctors and these all have their own stock of vaccines. If you are not in the age group of getting the vaccine free of charge, I would still recommend people or or you as health professionals to offer the vaccine to your patients. It's not an expensive vaccine, it's just a few euros. And of course, I'm not saying you will prevent a death, but you can prevent mortality, but you are going to prevent a lot of the complications and improve the social life of your patient itself. Remember that if we try to avoid one case of influenza, okay, one patient with influenza will transmit via droplets, okay, another five patients who are immediately next to him. So even if you have one patient in your waiting room, waiting to be seen by the doctor with influenza, he is infecting all the other that's patients. That's where the concept and... of herd immunity becomes exactly. so, so exactly. important. So that is so important. So if you do work on prevention and give the vaccine, we have to remove all the myths that if you get influenza because you've taken the immunization, you get influenza because suddenly you got soaked in the rain outside. This is not true, all right? It is true if you go out in the cold or get a bit wet, your immune system will feel that and maybe your antibody response will not be so good, but you will never catch influenza by being out in the rain. So these are absolutely myths, okay? (laughs) Another myth. I think on influenza we are full of myths, and people start believing everything. These are completely false myths. But what is really true is that the influenza vaccine works. It really works. We have the trivalent vaccine. Today we even get a tetravalent vaccine if we want to. The chances have gone up that the WHO gets this right from over 60% to close to 90% today. And of course, this will guarantee that it will um, prevent a large number of the complications. Dr. Barbara, these interviews are mostly aimed towards healthcare professionals, but we also understand we've been re- we're receiving feedback from the general population as well that some people also watch these videos out of their own interest in their own health. 
and I understand that maybe some pregnant women will be watching this video and asking whether they should receive the influenza okay, vaccination okay. or not. Okay. What can you say? No, there is absolute, no absolute contraindication to give the influenza vaccine for pregnant women. They should always ask their gynecologist because, as you know, in pregnancy there could be various conditions and different complications. Uh, but as I said, this is not a live vaccine. This is an inactivated vaccine. So there are absolutely no contraindications. Last year, we heard that uh, in the America and, the United, and in the United Kingdom, uh, the intranasal live vaccine was stopped because they were saying this is not giving enough immunity to that particular person. And also there were some people, especially who are asthmatics, who reacted to the inhaler. So they could have got um, an, an exacerbation of an acute um, exacer of, of asthma. Um, it was stopped last year, but the United Kingdom are thinking of reintroducing it once again, because as you mentioned, once you give that live vaccine, this gives herd immunity. And it not only protected a large number of children from getting influenza, but it also protected the elderly, because the young and the elderly are always together. <laughs> and this does not affect us in Malta locally, because we do not give the intranasal um, live vaccine. So we only have the inactivated vaccine. Um, very soon, I think we'll have um, the publicity campaign by the Ministry for Health um, to give the influenza vaccine. Of course, it's a very good vaccine. We'll be giving the trivalent vaccine, which will um, actually give us protection against what is predicted to give us influenza for this particular season. We already have some idea on the types of influenza which we have already seen in our patients in the last month and thankfully uh, these have been included in the vaccine already so i i strictly or, or i encourage all my colleagues and health professionals here to give the vaccine and give advice to their patients to take the vaccine. And we take it ourselves as well, uh, lead sure. by example. I'm usually <laughs> one of the first to take the vaccine. <laughs> um, in conclusion, because we're nearing the end, what are your conclusive remarks? Yes, I think uh, we have so many myths um, and facts about influenza. We are all scientists, after all, and we really want to look at the facts from the scientific point of view. So as you mentioned and asked me quite well in this interview, there is no way one can think of how you can get an infection if there is no live virus or bacterium in the vaccine. It is only the body's immune response which is reacting and the immune response will protect someone against getting the infection and if one does not get the infection to the full, he will not get those complications. And the complications which we can get can be quite severe. Pneumonias, encephalitis, all right? Um, all these can kill, they have a mortality. But even if we don't get the complications, an influenza will keep you away from work, from your social life for about three weeks. So I would invest wisely, all right? Invest in our health. And if we take the vaccine, I think that would be really good because it will prevent these serious viral infections. We can never stress this enough. Thank exactly. you, Dr. Barbara, for being with Thank us here today. And we invite all of you, our audience, to share and like this video and to comment on the Synapse Facebook page. We aim to keep you provided with more information about upcoming episodes in the weeks to come. Thank you so much. <laughs>